There are a few shots from the famous casino here in Monte Carlo, Monaco. And well, we've parked up the Rolls Royce and we are set to bring you an afternoon of turbocharged sport right the way through. We've got uh, our big uh, upcoming jump off class. The Hoses are just going along beside us because we're just cooling things off. It's warm, it's nice, it's exciting. We're right along the shore, and alongside me is Frederick Tabaka. I think we're high enough. We're not going to. Yeah, get we're, we're in perfect <laughs> position. Nothing can happen to us. You think? You never know. You Absolutely, never know in Monte Carlo. Well, here in Monte Carlo, lots does happen. That's yeah. the main point about it. But we first of all, we're going to reflect on what happened just two weeks ago when we were in that Cascai Estoril and have a little look at the prize giving there. It was the wonderful grey at the top, Harley van der Bishop, and of course Nicola Philip. Parts. Uh, under the lights, very, very different to here, but a super finish for him. Yeah, the, the lights were the only thing that were the same, but his, the, on, on that fast, big grass arena, um, a great finish, like you said. Took all the risks, uh, got some good advice from his teammate, um, from Martin Fuchs, and they celebrated as a, as a as a team victory. And that was, was what, to me, was so beautiful about that win. Um, the, the, the information that Nicola got from his teammate and how it worked out, that how they, they beat... Um, the n number two and number three there on yeah. the podium it was it was a, a split second game over such a big arena um, and then it comes down to teammates of the yes. gcl helping you out to win the gct grand prix that's 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 a beautiful part of our uh, of our sport i have to say well a good finish for him and uh, his first victory putting it on to for the uh, launchy global champions tour run and of course it'll make it a significant difference to the uh, lineup for the championship, which we'll take a look at in uh, just a moment's time. But, it, you know, new faces keep coming up, and it'll be great to see him in the launching Global Champions Tour Super Grand Prix in Prague as well. Talking about that lineup, that's yeah. going to be some Grand Prix. We've got literally already every, everybody that you want to get in there is there. It, it, it's the best horses, the best riders. Shall I give it a rundown? Scott Brash should win the top Alexander. We have got Carlos Lopez. We've got Ben Mayer in there. We've got Nicola Philipparts came in there as well. Peter Fredrickson in there as well. And that's just one's off Gregory, the top of my head. Yeah, Gregory it's, Wathalek. It's, um, it's going to be the, 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 the toughest, biggest jump. Of, forget about all the championships. Come and look at that uh, Super Grand Prix. Well, let's have a look at uh, Nicola's round a little from uh, Qashqai. And it was a really super one. Yeah. The, um, he really used um, the stride of his horse to the maximum. And here he comes on a double combination goes up onto the arena and now comes the part where he really won it where he made all the difference there's, got, there's a jump coming up now and then he goes away from the in-gate and look one two three four five six seven all the others did eight here he made it tight on the rollback over the lighthouse and then to the last finish and that's where he really won it in that um, seven strided line and that's what when martin fuchs said you can do it it is possible it's the yeah. only place where you can beat gregory water your fellow countryman um do it try it trust it go for it and he performed and he delivered he did certainly that well moving already on from that let's have a look at the overall uh, lineup for the championship series for the launching global champions tour so far and uh, with all three of them competing uh, here in monaco it looks like there's edwina tops alexander at the top of it it is uh, ben mayer just behind that as we mentioned two victories in the grand prix already this season scott brash nicola philippard's there all through to that uh, launching global champions tour super grand prix already daniel doisa we'd like to see him in there as well and i'm sure joss Beloy as well as our leading six on the championship table at the moment but again ben just keep just keeping that lead there edwina but ben closing in on there we'll see what happens this week yeah ben ben is in is an amazing form um whether it's on the gcl or individual on the gct it's in in unbelievable how he performs at every level and he doesn't ride safe he rides gutsy he rides with with so much confidence in himself and his horses and that makes a big uh, a big difference well we're going to reflect on monaco now we have a little look at last year we're also going to see what it takes to win here in this speci very special arena completely different to uh, two weeks ago in estoril and who better to tell us than one of the legends john whisker what makes a horse really work in this arena here in monaco john Argento's perfect horse for, for this arena. It's like uh, it's a little bit like outdoor jumping in indoor jumping outdoors rather. So it's yeah, it's a small tiring. Uh, you know, it's difficult for the horse, it's difficult for the riders. I think it's also quite difficult for the course builder, you know, to get it right. But no, um, my two horses here, Cassini Chaplin, is not really suited to this ring, but uh, he's going to have to get used to it. <laughs> But Argento loves it. Yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, it's just his cup of tea. Yeah. He's, well, he's really careful for a start, which is, which is a good asset for any horse. But uh, he's sharp and nimble and quick, and 
you know, he's looking for the jumps. It just, yeah, he, he just likes these small rings. Talking about confidence uh, in, yeah. in your horse, you ask him which horse suits for mm. this arena. My horse, Agenda does. Absolutely, absolutely, and it should do. Well, we talked about a few of the other horses as well, and we've been looking back through the record books of this. I mean, three-time winner here, Richard Spooner. I mean, you know, he, he's the master of faster. And as that he's time known. was unbelievable. Yeah. How, how he won that it was uh, it was a brilliant performance to win it three times in, I think, two consecutive times as well. Yes, he did. It was. Uh, John Witcher, of course, has gone into second before now with Argento. And uh, here's a little of their performance yesterday. Gives, the, gives them a very good start. I was talking to John on the way up the stairs to do that interview as well. Talking about the horse, you know, he's had a, he's had a break. He's 16 years of age now, but he's full, full and he's fresh and he's ready to go. He's, he's still as, as fresh and as bouncy. We looked it up yesterday. How many Grand Prix did he win in his career? Nine or ten already. Yeah. And, and still at the age of 16, as you see, when you see how, the, how he makes his jumps, how he's still fresh and, and respectful to all defences. It's just natural quality and natural ability that he has shown throughout his entire career. And even now, like you say, Stephen, it's, it's, that's also why you asked him the question. This, this is a potential Grand Prix winner here tomorrow. Absolutely. Well, uh, we'll have a look at a few other contenders as well in a minute or two. But oh, before that, we're going to reflect on last year and uh, see what it took to win because Alberto Zorzi was a winner. In fact, the last two winners have been Italian. It was Emanuele Gaudiano before that, and that was lightning fast on that occasion. And we've mentioned in there Richard Spooner, all those sort of people that have, that have won here. And it's, it's thrown up a few surprises over the years. It's been really interesting. But Alberto Zorzi, winner here last year. Couldn't I say Kay on that occasion? Yeah, exactly. And, and it's true. We have we've had, had a few surprises. This was the event where... Um, the Moroccan rider, uh, uh, Kabir Ouadar uh, came, came to the surface. It was his first outing on, on, the, on the Global Champions Tour. He came third. And this is where Bassa Mohamed won his first launching Global Champions Tour Grand Prix. Alberto Zorzi, Emanuele Gaudiano. This is the, the type of arena where um, the, 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 the regular riders could get trapped into an easy fault and where the, the, the young Lions could pick up their first big win. Well, let's have a look at, a look at last year because it was a great reflection there. Roberto Zorzi, as you say, going on to his first win on the Longy Global Champions Tour. And he was up against a seasoned campaigner in uh, Christian Alman as we take a look at the head-to-head -head between those two, which will just give you a little idea of what it's like to go chasing for the win in the Grand Prix here in the uh, Monaco Arena. Here's the two, Frederick, as uh, we remember. And, of course, Alberto Zorzi, if you're looking at your screen, in the green, in the military green, and uh, Christian Alman in uh, his uh, Zangazida blue and yellow colours. Yep, and right from the start it was clear that uh, Zorzi was here, was in it to win it, um, took the lead right away. Here, Alman just catching up uh, with Delosia, a man it was that he took for, for the first time to uh, a big international five-star Grand Prix. And then halfway through the track, they stayed on par but the finish was just a little bit quicker for Alberto Zorzi on his very experienced Cornetto K, where uh, Alma was on a less experienced horse. And, and being in a small arena like this, I mean, a second in this arena, half a second in this arena it's, is it's a mile. A world's difference. Yeah, yeah, well, absolutely world of difference. Well, another man who's very good against the clock is Michael van der Vluten. And I caught up with him a little bit earlier on to ask him about competing in this arena. And which horse would he ride? For the course designer, it's it's uh, not so much options for the for the course. So uh, what you often see is that uh, many riders uh, ride the same lines, the same strides. So I think um, what makes the difference is if if you have a, a natural quick horse. Um, I think that's a horse you need in in this kind of arena to to win. Yeah, I've been here a couple of times. Uh, every time some 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 different horses. Um, uh, this year I bring, uh, for example, Dana Blue. It's it's um, it's a horse with a lot of blood, uh, a very sharp horse, and I think that that's something you need in this arena, you know, because it's very delicate fences. Uh, they really have to pay attention. Uh, the, the fences are close on the side, people uh, nearby. They really have to be focused on the jump, and I think a horse has to be uh, has to need a practical uh, canter, you know, an easy canter. You have to go easy forward, backwards. Um, yeah, a horse with a lot of blood. Yeah, okay. If you really talk about a natural quick horse, what I what I said before, I think uh, Argento from from John Whitaker is a, is a typical horse. Um, what really suits, suits in this arena. Uh, if you see yesterday, he was also second uh, with making ac actually uh, a few strides more than, than the winner, you know, but because he's so quick and, and so um, elastic uh, in his canter, I think he, yeah, he's a, he's a very perfect horse for this kind of arenas. 
Well, there's a few to pick out of the field, but there's a lot more in there as well, isn't there? Absolutely. Um, Argento is, is a potential winner, but um, also, like Michael said, if you read between the lines, there, there, a surprise is always possible here in Monte Carlo. Yeah, we saw Scott Brash, Ben Mayer fly around yesterday. Pierre Schwitz has already won two classes. There's a whole group of them there that could yep, shake it up in good form. this week here in Monaco. Good form so far, and our big jump-off class coming up very, very shortly. And we're getting a little reminder of what we've seen in the last couple of weeks as well on the Global Champions League and Longines Global Champions Tour. Don't go too far away. Back in a minute.